Hi everyone, welcome to the Oakley Roots YouTube channel. In today's video, we are going to be making a bag that I have seen for years on social media. There are so many videos already out going over it, but I have wanted to make it for so long, so dang it if I'm making it, we're putting it in a video. <laughs> Today, we're gonna make the Lola. <gasps> hey, pretty girl, this pattern is from Swoon. Now, this bag is a fan favorite for good reason. I mean, just look at the shape of this beautiful, beautiful, cute bag. This fabric, I know, I know, it's so good. It's so vibrant. It's also cotton lycra. <gasps> I know. Cotton lycra is like a jersey knit material. It's oftentimes used for clothing, but I have so many yards in beautiful prints because cotton lycra is super vibrant. It's like the colors just pop more than normal on cotton lycra and I have been dying to use some in a bag. I've done it before on the channel. We're doing it again today. This is a cotton lycra exterior. We have a vinyl bottom. We have this beautiful vinyl accent right here over that zipper. So the bag has this one front zipper pocket. It's nice and small. Nothing on the back. Great for like a panel or like a big fabric design. You can see these are kind of bigger prints. It's about the size of my hand. So this is a good bag. It's not a huge bag, but it's a good bag for a big print. And then you can see on the top here, we have our main zipper. It's a nice, easy domed zipper. Nothing challenging about this curve. Inside, we have just a nice big opening and a slip pocket. There's not a lot that's complicated about this bag. The one thing I wanna show you is that we do change up how these strap tabs and how the strap is made. This was completely the idea of so many other people. I was watching Lauren Warmino's video. She goes through this in depth and she has this beautiful vinyl accent that goes up top. So I highly encourage you to go check out her video. I wanted to do the exact same thing. So I used her method. However, I wanted to do it without vinyl here which makes it a little bit more challenging because with vinyl, we can leave the edges where we insert this raw, but with cotton lycra, we can't. So I finagled it, I tried it out. I'm sure other people have done this as well, but I'm gonna show you how I do it today in the tutorial, how I attach these strap tabs with cotton lycra so that we don't have any raw edges showing. And then we did the swivel hook trick, which is again what Lauren did. You could definitely do a rectangle ring here instead of a D ring, and then just attach your strap without these hooks. However, I like the idea of the hooks because then you can kind of change them out. So you can see this one, these straps are a little short. So this is like a great elbow bag. However, if you wanted to make longer straps so that it hangs more by your hip, you could definitely just change these out and make double long straps. I wanted to show you though, hold on, let me get a step stool so you can see how big it is. All right, let's see if I can show you this. So you can see this is it on the elbow. It's a nice, easy size. If I put it up to my shoulder, it's a little bit in the armpit. So if you're a little bit on the thinner side, more petite, it'll work. But I prefer my straps a little bit longer. So what we could do, because we have this wonderful hardware here, I just grabbed one of my pre-made straps. So this is just, you can buy these everywhere. We're gonna start carrying some of these on the shop, Oakley Roots as well. But this is just a pre-made strap, easy peasy. It's got a nice vibrant design to it. And I'm just going to attach it to one of the D-rings on the front. And then I'm attach it to the diagonal D-ring on the back. You see? And now, and now I have crossbody right how cute is that I love this bag so much I love it I love it I love it so I'll have a link for this pattern down in the description this is a lot of fun one thing I wanted to give you guys a heads up about too with cotton lycra if you decide to use it cotton lycra is not that challenging to work with I have lots and lots of tips on how to interface it so that it's easier to work with the biggest thing I love about cotton lycra is that it just doesn't show wrinkles. So this cotton lycra is actually attached to Decoville Heavy, which is a firmer interfacing. And when we turn this bag out, it's a birthed bag, the Decoville Heavy gets super wrinkly. It's very, very wrinkled underneath. However, I don't know if you can see, you don't see those wrinkles because cotton lycra is a knit material. It stretches, right? It's just not gonna show it like 
a cotton woven wood or even sometimes a vinyl wood. So I really, really suggest you give this a try. I hope you do. So thank you so much to Swoon for allowing me to use your patterns in my tutorials. My channel started with Swoon patterns. They were the most kind, generous folks from the very beginning allowing me to use their patterns. If you're new to the Ochre It's YouTube channel, please consider clicking subscribe down below. If at any point you like this video, please give it a like. Any questions, comments, shout outs, anything at all, leave them down in the comment section. If you've made this bag, I wanna know about it. If you've got other tweaks, tricks, tips, I wanna know about it. I've seen some folks quilt this with like a leather or vinyl. It's just such a perfect shape. It's so classy, but so useful. It's nice and big. This bag has already been claimed. I mean, the moment I made it, it was claimed. It is so cute. All right, guys, let's get started on our Swoon Lola. So for this bag, you're gonna want about a third or a half of a yard of exterior fabric. Now the pattern does call for quilt weight fabric, so that would be a cotton woven, just a lighter fabric. I'm gonna be using this cotton lycra, which is very stretchy. I know a lot of us have this on hand, and if you don't make clothes, you're kind of like, what am I supposed to do with this? So I'm gonna show you how we make the bag with cotton lycra today. For the contrasting material, you're gonna need about a quarter of a yard of that or a fat quarter. I'm gonna be using this for the base of the bag as well as the handles and a little bit of the accent pieces. So if you're gonna use longer handles, you're gonna want a half of a yard for sure. This is vinyl. Get a roll of vinyl, don't get a sheet of vinyl. Get a roll of vinyl that you like. This is a more lightweight vinyl. It has a nice fuzzy back, but it's very lightweight. It's not thick. It's much lighter than marine vinyl. Then for the lining, you're gonna want a half a yard. I'm using waterproof canvas, and that just means I don't have to interface it with anything. I don't have to use any woven interfacing at all. It's a lot easier. I'm a big fan of waterproof canvas for linings of bags. This bag especially is great to use waterproof canvas on the lining. All right, let's talk interfacing. For the base of the bag, I'm using Decoville Heavy. You're gonna need about an eighth of a yard of this if you're using it. I did use Zekoville Heavy by mistake for the exterior of the bag, for the sides, and it turned out beautifully with the cotton lycra. This will wrinkle once you're moving it around, but if you have a vinyl or a cotton lycra over it, you're really not gonna see it. Then, if you're using a lot of quilt cotton, you're gonna want at least two yards of your woven interfacing. This woven interfacing is so fused. This is from Castine Handcrafted. It's a really beautiful option. You could also use ShapeFlex, Pellon SF101. There's lots of options out there. You just want something that you can adhere to your material that's going to prevent it from stretching and fraying. That's kind of the purpose of this right here. We don't want our cotton like or stretching when we're building the bag, and we don't want anything fraying, so. Quilt cotton, cotton lycra, even cotton canvas, I would suggest you add some woven interfacing to it. And then my Decoville light. Now I'm adding Decoville light to the exterior of the bag to just beef it up a little bit. I'm using this instead of foam. The pattern does call for foam. You're gonna want a half a yard of it. I'm using Decoville light instead. If you are using foam, you're also gonna need some sort of a fusible web. That's like a, it's like a fusible glue to hold the foam in place because these cuts are smaller than the panel. I'll show you that in a moment. I say go with Decoville light. Fusible fleece is also a fantastic option if you don't wanna use the foam. All right, here's a bunch of the hardware. You're gonna have two zippers today. I just have this nice long zipper tape. I love using long zipper tape. You're gonna have a smaller zipper that goes on the outside pocket of the bag and then a longer zipper for the top of the bag. The top of the bag zipper calls for a 12 inch zipper. Just remember if you buy a standard 12 inch zipper, it does measure longer than that. So we will be measuring this longer today. If you're using zipper tape, I would have at least 14 inches for that longer zipper and then at least seven inches for the smaller zipper. I have two zipper pulls to go with that. I have this wonderful double-sided tape. I have some rivets. I'll be using rivets for these handles today. I'm gonna try to remember to add purse feet. I always forget to add these, but I'm hoping to add purse feet. I have five here, four might be fine. We'll play with this in just a moment. And then because I'm changing up the straps, I have four swivel hooks and four D-rings. This is just going to allow the straps to be interchangeable. Totally unnecessary, honestly. You don't need the swivel hooks. You could just use rectangle rings instead if you wanna just attach the straps directly to this. But if you do that, use rectangle rings. Don't use these D-rings. You don't want the straps to get all bunched up on this little curve here. These D-rings are really best if you also are using a swivel hook. And then I have my bag tag. Alrighty, here's all the other stuff. I, of course, am using this beautiful variegated thread for the top. If you've been here for a while, you know I can't get enough of this. This is Tex 45 thread. This might be too heavy for most domestic machines, 
The wizardry stitchery is where I get this from and they do have other weights available if you have a domestic machine and you really wanna use this. I say go for Tex 35, use it in the top thread. I don't use it in the bobbin. In the bobbin, I just use some Gutermid thread. The bobbin thread isn't seen as much, so the less expensive thread from Joann's works perfectly. For my thread today, I'm using Schmetz 8012 Microtex needles. I have four marking tools because you never know what you're gonna try to mark on. You want something for everything. So this is a air erasing marker. This is a heat erasing marker. This is a vinyl marker. It wipes right off of vinyl. And this is a heat erasing pen. You just, you just never know. I have an X-Acto knife set here as well. This is just to get a little bit more precise cuts for that front accent. I have a couple different types of scissors. My thread snips, obviously, always by the sewing machine. I have my Kai scissors for my fabric and my vinyl. I have my one inch by six inch ruler. Honestly, I think everybody should have these. I should probably buy them in bulk and just give them away to everyone. And then I have a healthy supply of clips as well as a couple of stilettos. This stiletto is from By Annie, and it also has a seam press over here, which I didn't even realize when I first demoed it. So this is for pressing down seams if you can't use your iron. So we'll see if we can play with that some today. And then this is just my seam ripper and stiletto combo. So to start with the pattern pieces, I wanna talk about the handles. This is the handle pattern piece the pattern comes with. If you wanna use this piece, definitely go for it. But with the modifications today, we're gonna to make it a little bit longer. So instead of using this handle here, we're actually gonna have two pieces of vinyl. These are cut at 18 inches by three inches. We're going to have three quarter of an inch wide straps. So all of our hardware also needs to be three quarters of an inch. And then for the strap connectors, I have four cuts. These are each three inches by one and a half inches. And then I have a little three quarter of an inch by three inch cuts, four of them, of my Decoville light to provide a little bit extra stability on these strap tabs. So this was straight from Lauren Mormino. This is exactly what she recommends. She is a wizard at bag making, so I completely trust her, but we're going to attach these to the center of the back of our strap tabs just to make sure we don't have to worry about these ripping at any point. So the next pattern piece is the main panel. You're gonna have two cuts of your lining. This is just my waterproof canvas. It's not interfaced with anything. It doesn't need to be. If you're using quill cotton, you do wanna interface it with your woven interfacing. And then I have my two exterior cuts. This is my cotton liker. I know it's so fun, so pretty. And these are both already interfaced with the woven interfacing. Next up, I have my pocket trim. This is that little accent that goes around the front pocket, pretty much just to cover up the raw edges to make it a lot easier to build that pocket. I'm telling you, this, this method makes it so much easier to do those pockets. I still haven't cut out the interior rectangle yet. I'm gonna show you how I do that with the X-Acto knife. For the bottom panel, I have a cut of my vinyl, no interfacing or anything, and a cut of my waterproof canvas. This is my lining, again, no interfacing. So these are a couple of extra cuts that are mentioned in the pattern. They don't have pattern pieces. One is your lining pocket for the front zipper, and the other is two cuts for the slip pocket on the inside. The slip pocket is optional. You can also change this around so you just have one long cut, fold it in half. Lots to play with here. I have a piece of quilt cotton that does have woven interfacing on it for my pocket pretty much just because I didn't have enough of this waterproof canvas for this last cut. So that's the only reason this one is quilt cotton. And then we have the extra interfacing. Now this is the main panel foam, but I am using Decoville Light here. This is Decoville Light instead of foam. This is not the same size as the main panel. So just make sure you know that. Don't use the main panel to cut this out. This is smaller. If you're using foam and it's not a fusible foam, you need a fusible web, which is just like another cut of material that will have glue on both sides so you can fuse it to your exterior panel. Or you can use fusible fleece. I am using Decoville Light. And then for the bottom support, I'm using Decoville Heavy. Like I said, my first bag, I used Decoville Heavy for these cuts right here. And it turned out pretty amazing. So if you're up for the challenge, I definitely encourage you to take it. So let's talk about fusing woven interfacing to cotton lycra for just a moment. I like to either do one of two things. I will fuse my woven interfacing to a big cut of my cotton lycra, and then I will use the pattern piece to cut it out. So the cotton lycra and the woven interfacing are already fused together when I cut the pattern piece out. Or option two, I will cut out the woven interfacing using the pattern piece and then just fuse that woven interfacing to my cut of cotton lycra and then cut it out tracing that, which is what I did in this case. Those are the two options I would really suggest when it comes to cotton lycra and woven interfacing and cutting out pattern pieces. I would not suggest you use the pattern piece and cut out the cotton lycra first and then try to fuse it to something. 
because cotton lycra stretches. It will just stretch and it'll get warped and it'll drive you crazy. With cotton lycra, we wanna make it as easy as possible. So fuse the stuff to the cotton lycra first. The cutting of the cotton lycra should be the last step. So I already have it fused onto this. So now what I'm gonna do is fuse my Decoville light to the back of this. Now there's very specific instructions on where this goes. So I'm gonna grab one of my cuts of cotton lycra and flip it over. And when we fuse on either your foam or your fusible fleece or your Decoville light, Decoville heavy, whatever interfacing you're using here, when you fuse it on, you want it to be a half of an inch up from the bottom and a quarter of an inch down from the top. Okay, it's not perfectly centered. It's fine if you, do, if you don't get it exactly perfect, but it should be perfectly centered on the sides, half of an inch from the bottom, quarter of an inch from the top. And then I'm just gonna give it a quick press from the back. Decoville Light likes to be fused from the front, but I just need it to stick a little bit so I can turn this over without having to worry about it shift around on me. So now I can just flip this over because it's stuck to it enough. And now I'm gonna give it a good steamy fuse from the front, from the cotton lycra side. And when you're fusing anything to cotton lycra, be careful that you're not pushing and then pushing to the side. Don't push down and then push out. You wanna be more lightweight with this or more push it down and then lift it up and move it. Because again, that cotton lycra is stretchy and it can unfuse as everything gets hot and the glue melts a little bit and then it'll move on you. So just, you just have to be a little bit more gentle with cotton lycra. Alrighty, there we go. Now I have my interfacing attached. And what's nice with this Decoville light is now my cotton lycra just feels like a really soft vinyl or leather. It's, I, it's just, I love this combination. So go ahead and repeat that with your other exterior panel with your interfacing of choice. All right, once you have both of those fused, go ahead and put them to the side. And now we can fuse our strap connectors. So again, this is not in the pattern. This is an alteration to the pattern. I got this from Lauren Mormino. And what we're gonna do is we're going to just center our Decoville light onto the back of our vinyl. And now you can just fuse this from the back. As long as you're not touching the iron to the front of the vinyl, you should be okay. So you see we have that fused on. So now whenever we go to make them, all we have to do is wrap our vinyl around that Decoville light and we have the perfect size strap tab. So go ahead and do this for all four of them. All right, last we wanna fuse our bottom support to our bottom exterior panel. So I'm just gonna grab my vinyl. And this one needs to be centered on the back. So it should be about half of an inch away from everything. So just give it a good look around, get your ruler out and measure it. My iron is getting a little mad at me for fusing it to the back of the Decoville light. So I'm just going to lay down a piece of quilt cotton over this and I'm going to fuse just like that. All right, there we go. Now I have everything fused to my vinyls. We can set all of this to the side and get started. So grab your exterior panels and let's see which one do we want to be the front panel with the zipper. I think we're going to use this one. That sounds good. So now I'm gonna grab my pattern piece and I'm gonna lay it over the front of my panel and we're going to mark this rectangle here for our zipper. The pattern also does give you the exact measurements of how high it needs to be and how big this rectangle needs to be. So if you don't wanna trace it out like I'm doing and you wanna be a little bit more precise, you can do that using the pattern instructions. So now I'm gonna grab a small cutting mat and put it underneath my pattern. And then I have my X-Acto knife and I'm going to very carefully cut through all of the layers along this marked edge. All right, sometimes cotton lycra can be a little finicky, so just be careful as you're trying to push this out and just go in if you need to and recut the corners. Grab some scissors if it's easier. It's okay if it's messy. Again, we're not, we're not gonna show these raw edges, so if it's a little messy, that's fine. So when we flip this over, this is what it should look like. Let's go ahead and cut out the rectangle in our accent piece as well. So taking my accent piece, I'm gonna lay it right side down, wrong side up, and I can just lay this over it. You could also grab a ruler here and just measure exactly where this rectangle goes. If you have pre-made acrylic templates from tops and bobbins, and you wanna use those, you can use that as well. I'm just gonna use the pattern piece and I'm going to trace inside that rectangle and then I'll use a ruler to clean it up. All right, that pocket opening is supposed to be five inches by half of an inch. So however you need to get there, go ahead and do that. You can see I, I did a lot of lines here. So once again, I'm gonna get my X-Acto knife and I'm just gonna very, very carefully cut 
along these edges. Now this is a little bit trickier because these raw edges will be left. So you want to be as careful as possible that you don't go too far, you don't get too wobbly. All right, there we go. So I just wanna show you what this is gonna look like. See, we're gonna cover this. These raw edges aren't gonna be seen, we're just gonna cover them up like that. To make sure we don't have any problems with these raw edges, we can take this to the sewing machine and we can do a zigzag stitch around all four edges. If you don't have a zigzag stitch, you can just do a straight stitch, just an eighth of an inch right around all four edges. You just wanna make sure that this material here doesn't start fraying or acting up. If you're using a foam interfacing, this step is also gonna help kind of thin this out to make it easier to install the zipper. So I'm just gonna run around all four edges with a zigzag stitch. There we go, we've got the zigzag stitch. Honestly, with this design, that zigzag stitch on its own looks pretty cool. So if you wanted to, if you want to play with that idea a little bit, cotton lycra is a good material to do that with. All right, so now looking at the front side, let's grab our double-sided tape. And we're just going to add some tape to all four edges here. So on the exterior of the bag. I'm gonna add it to the two long edges as well as the two short edges. And now I just remove the paper from all the tape and do your best to take your accent piece and center it over this. So don't have it too high up. You want it to be pretty perfect. So it's a little hard to kind of twist it all around. Just do your best. What I like to do is kind of gently place it like that and then I flip it over and look at the back because the back will really show you where it is. So mine is too far to the left. So I need to push it to the right just a little bit more. There we go, let's flip it over. There we go, that looks pretty perfect. See, I have just the right amount on each side. There we go. So now let's take this to the sewing machine and just top stitch along all the edges on the, ec on the outer side. So not this inner part right here, this inner rectangle, don't touch that. Eighth of an inch on the outside of our contrast material. So before you finish this up, make sure you check the back and that you caught the exterior if you're if your contrast material is a little off, you might not have caught it. So just check everything. And I don't know if you can tell, but I did leave all of my tails really long and I did not backstitch. I'm going to flip it over to the wrong side and I'm gonna pull on my bobbin thread just a little bit until I can see the top thread, that colored thread, kind of peeking through and then I can just pull it back. So my goal is to get all four of my threads, my two bobbin and my two top threads, all four of them on the back here. And then all I have to do is just double them up. Just do two and two like this. And then I'm just going to triple knot this. That gives it a really clean look on the front. You don't see any back stitching, but it also secures it really well, especially if you're using polyester thread, which you should be. All right, so like, this is so much easier than doing normal like inset pockets. So now let's grab some zipper tape. And just so you know, this is the zipper you're gonna see the most. You're not gonna see the top zipper quite as well as you will the zipper. So if you have a really cool zipper pull, I would put it on this part. So I've got my zipper tape. I'm just gonna put my zipper pull on here. All right, so we want the zipper right side up and when the zipper is being closed, it's going towards the left. So we want it just like this. Now we can flip our front panel over. So we're looking at the wrong side. Grab your double-sided tape. And now we're gonna add some double-sided tape right along that interior edge of your rectangle, okay? But I like to take the double-sided tape and extend it past the Decoville light because we have like a little like a little dip right here and it can be a little tricky catching the zipper just on that material in the front. So I like to extend it farther because my zipper's longer than it needs to be anyways. So I'm just going to extend the tape farther than this opening on our front panel. So first I'm just going to remove the paper from the top long edge. And then with my zipper right side up, I'm going to take my panel and lay it right side up, centered over it. Now I'm not that concerned about my zipper pull or anything like that. I just wanna make sure it's centered over my zipper tape. And I have a lot on both sides, that's good. All right, so now I can kind of move my zipper back into the window, pull my zipper pull through, and then close it all the way. And that will give me a nice straight line to work with. Once I'm happy with that, I'm gonna flip this up 
And I am going to remove the paper from the other long edge of my zipper tape. And then I can just push this down and tape down the bottom edge. This is just kind of an easier way for me to make sure that this is as straight as possible. It's, it's not always super straight, but it's as straight as I can get it. All right, so now we're gonna top stitch along this interior rectangle at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Just make sure you move the zipper pull as you go. I do suggest you back stitch over your zipper coils because using the zipper a lot, those can get a lot of use and they can break easily. All right, there we go. Now the zipper is installed. Once again, I left those tails nice and long, so I'm just going to flip this over and use my bobbin thread here to pull those front threads to the back so that all four tails are back here. And then I'm just going to take all four of the threads and create a triple knot to secure it in place. And then just make sure you trim down those tails. So now I'm gonna grab my zipper lining pocket and I'm going to lay this over the back side here just to make sure it's centered. So I'm going to lift up to look at the stitching on the side and I wanna just lay this over to make sure it's completely covering all the stitching. There we go. And then I'm gonna use this kind of as a template to trim down my zipper tape. Honestly, you can trim it down even more than that. We don't need to sew in the zipper tape in the seams. So now what we're gonna do, let's see, let's see what we can do. So we can lay our zipper pocket right side up and then take our front panel and lay it right side up. And we're gonna attach the right side of the zipper lining to the back of the zipper tape, which I know you don't have a whole lot to work with here. If you have any double-sided tape holding it down, you can pull it out. I just messed with this at the machine. So you can see I trimmed down my zipper tape so that it's shorter than the width of my lining. I actually did not want to do that. I wanted to leave it the same width, but that's okay. We'll be fine. So what we're going to do now is we're going to just use a zipper foot and we're going to stitch on the top side of the zipper tape to hold down the zipper lining. You can have it extend a little bit further. If this is messy, don't worry about it. We're just trying to attach the zipper lining to our zipper tape going along this whole top edge. A zipper foot is how you're going to get the best seam here. All right, so I have that top edge stitched down. Now we're going to do the same thing on the bottom. So take the bottom edge of your lining and just pull it right side up to the back edge of the bottom of your zipper tape. There we go. And then just try to line up the sides as best you can, but we're gonna do the same thing. We're just gonna kind of fold it all out of the way, take it to the sewing machine, but we're just gonna stitch on the right side of our zipper tape, stitching it to this bottom edge of our lining. So I'm looking at the back of my zipper tape and the right side of the bottom edge of my lining. Make sure to use that zipper foot. And you might notice that when I'm stitching this down, my lining sticks out a little bit further than the zipper tape. I do that because it's easier. It, it's really hard to exactly line up the edge of the zipper tape with that edge of the lining and catch both of them because it's such a narrow area here. So just by letting that lining stick out a little bit further, it's just easier to do that. And, and this, doesn't, this doesn't have to be perfect. It's just a lining pocket. So now we're gonna just kind of flatten it out as best you can. And we wanna stitch down the sides. So to stitch down the sides, we're going to flip our unit so that it's right side up. And then we're gonna fold it like this. And then we'll stitch down the sides of the lining and that's gonna close up the hole over here. So you can stitch these down both at a quarter or three eighths of an inch seam allowance, whatever's easiest for you. Do it on both sides. Alrighty, there we go. That pocket is nice and easy. So just give it a test, make sure everything is good, everything's closed up. It's a small pocket, but it's cute. You definitely have room to make this a bigger pocket. So if you wanna make this wider and a little bit deeper, you can. And that would allow you to put like a cell phone in it. Right now it is a pretty small pocket, but you could make it bigger. So now let's work on the handles. To make it a little bit less distracting, I'm gonna do the handles first on the back panel. Now flip your unit over to the wrong side and grab your template. And what I did was I just cut a slit right along the pattern piece over the top edge of that handle placement. Everything I learned about this was from Lauren Mormino in her tutorial. So again, I will have it listed and I'll have it linked up to the top corner here. But I'm just going to trace that line right there. There we go. This line is one inch wide. So now I'm going to flip it over and I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Now these lines are one inch wide, but my straps are three quarters of an inch and I don't want these to be cut wider than my strap. 
So I can just grab my little one inch by six inch ruler, line it up with the top edge here, and I'm just gonna find the ticks that are one eighth of an inch in from the left and the right. There we go. And that is three quarters of an inch right in between them. So I'm gonna do this for both of them. There we go. So now I have these nice little lines here marked that are three quarters of an inch wide. I'm gonna grab my little mat and my X-Acto knife and very, very carefully, I'm gonna cut between those marks, not farther than them. If anything, a little bit less than them. We want this to be a nice tight fit here. Now, when I do this, I'll be able to get through the Decoville light, but I'm probably not going perfectly through the cotton lycra because that stuff likes to stretch. So what I do is I just kind of push it through and kind of like saw it very gently. And that will help cut that cotton lycra. Just making sure I don't go past my marks. So now when I flip this over, I have those marks there. You know what, we need to prep our strap tabs, don't we? All right, so to prep our strap tabs, remember we have that interfacing on the back of them, we can just fold our vinyl over to wrap around that interfacing. There we go. And depending on what kind of vinyl you're using, you can use some double-sided tape here. I'm actually just gonna grab some clips and I'm just gonna clip along just a little bit on the edges here. So the back looks like a mess. We're not really gonna see the back of these, so that's okay but the front will look just like this. And it should be three quarters of an inch wide. Yep, they are, they're three quarters of an inch wide. So do this for all four of your strap connectors. All right, so now I'm gonna take all four of these to the sewing machine and I'm gonna top stitch along both of the long edges on all four of them at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So here's how I've been doing these. Let me know what you guys think. So we're gonna take our strap tab connector and we're gonna lay it wrong side up. So I see the back raw edges here. And I'm starting on the right hook over here. I'm gonna slide this in so that this top edge of my strap connector goes up about three quarters of an inch, a half of an inch. It doesn't have to be that far, but at least a half of an inch. So it's gonna go up behind here about a half of an inch, just like that. So now I see the raw edge of the cotton lycra on the top and the other side is underneath, is tucked underneath my vinyl. So it should look just like this. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to stitch not on this raw edge, but just below it by about an eighth of an inch. I should be catching this other raw edge that's underneath my vinyl. That's the goal here. I know it can be kind of hard to visualize. But remember, this is just a slit here. So right underneath, almost exactly where the slit is, is the other side of that slit. So I'm gonna do an eighth of an inch just below this raw edge. I'm not sewing on the top raw edge here. I'm only sewing on the vinyl and then the cotton liquor that's underneath. So an eighth of an inch, I'm gonna stitch it over. I'm gonna back stitch really well as well. I'm just gonna go over it two or three times. All right, so I've stitched on my strap connector and when I flip this over, I'm gonna check and make sure that I am stitching on my Decovel light or whatever interfacing you have here. You should have it on the stabilizer. If you wanna do this at a quarter of an inch, definitely you can go back and you can do it a little bit lower at a quarter of an inch seam allowance, that's fine too. I know that this is like right there on the edge, so it's a little worrisome for some, but that's okay. All right, so this is how it looks. Now let's grab one of our D-rings and we're going to thread this over the bottom edge of our D-ring. And what we do now is we just flip this whole strap up like this. And when you do that, you see we've stitched down the raw edge of that bottom section so you don't see it anymore. So we're gonna put the D-ring on here, fold the strap around the bottom of that D-ring and we're gonna slide the other end of the strap into that hole, just being very gentle. It should be a pretty tight fit. There we go. So now I'm gonna pull this edge out and I'm gonna push the whole, both of these back down so they're below the bottom part here. There we go. So now you decide how high or low you want this. Remember you don't want this edge to be too high up because we still have to put a zipper here but you do have enough room. You need about a quarter of an inch for the zipper later. So not too high, not too low. All right. So now what we can do is we can top stitch right along 
the strap tab beneath the bottom edge of the D-ring and that's going to attach it to the top edge of this cotton lycra. And then you could do another row of stitching right underneath. That's kind of what I've been doing. I've been doing one row of stitching right here on the tab above the seam and then another row right beneath and then I also add a rivet. Lots and lots of support here. So first I'm just gonna do the two rows of stitching. And there we go. Now we have like that little hidden strap attached in cotton lycra. All the raw edges are nice and covered. We don't have anything sticking out anywhere. If you have any little cuts of thread there bugging, you can very gently grab a lighter and just melt them very, very gently, nice and quick. Don't burn your fabric. There we go. That's looking cute. All right, and we'll add the rivets in the next step. So let's go ahead and repeat that for the other three. I'll just walk you through one more and then I'll do the other one off camera. So here we go. Here's another one of our strap tabs. And I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna lay it wrong side up and slide it into that slit going from the bottom to the top so that about half of an inch of this tab goes up and it's behind the top edge right here. There we go. And now I'm gonna to go to the machine and I'm going to stitch either an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch below this raw edge. We're stitching through the strap tab and also the cotton lycra underneath it. All right, now that that is stitched in place, we can grab our D-ring, slide it on so that this will wrap around the bottom straight edge of the D-ring and then slide the remaining edge through that slit very carefully. Don't rip anything. There we go. And then just pull it nice and tight and flip the whole strap so that it's pointing up. And now both of the ends should be down below the seam here. And then just use your eyeballs to try to match it up with the other side. Alrighty, so now I'm going to stitch right underneath the D-ring on the strap tab on this vinyl here. And I'm just gonna back stitch really well. And then I'm gonna do another row of stitching on the cotton lycra underneath the seam. Again, back stitching really well, just stitching everything down. You're going through a lot of layers on that bottom stitching. So just be careful. If you need to up your needle, go ahead and do that to a 9014 or bigger. Look at those cute little strap tabs. Isn't that adorable? I love this. All right, so I'm going to repeat that process with the front here. It shouldn't be any more difficult. This pocket is nice and low. It's not gonna get in our way. So I'm just gonna repeat that with the front panel. All right, here we go. This comes together pretty quickly. So I'm gonna add some rivets real quick. I'm gonna show you how I do that. Forgot to share with you guys my rivet presses in the beginning, but you've probably seen them on my channel. If you haven't, I'll put a link right around here somewhere so you can see all about my rivet press, how much I love it, how great it is, how you probably, you probably need one. So I'm going to add a rivet below the stitching that is on the cotton lycra. So remember I have one row of stitching on my vinyl, another row of stitching on my cotton lycra. My rivet is gonna go centered just below that stitching. That means these are should be super, super durable. I, we should not have to worry about these ripping or anything like that over time. So I'm just going to center it. You can mark a dot if it's helpful. And then I'm gonna pop the hole. And the hole should go through the cotton lycra, the Decoville light, and both ends of that strap tab. See all of that? It should go through all of that. My rivets are just the medium rivets from Emmeline Bags. I love them. And then I'm just gonna pop a rivet through there and then snap it to the back just like that. There we go. So now I have a rivet here. It's beautiful, it's perfect, I love it. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and do this for the other three strap tabs. And you can see I haven't set my rivets yet. I'm just snapping them together. That's what I love about rivets. You can kind of just pop them in there, snap them together, and then set them later. All right, so now I have my other rivet press. I can I cannot have too many rivet presses. I love these things. Uh, this one just has my die on it to set these rivets. Again, I'll have a whole tutorial linked if you wanna go learn more about all this. And now I'm just going to press these down. Perfect. Man, these straps are not going anywhere. I mean, what is it about a rivet that just gives you goosebumps? Doesn't it? it the thing I love about rivets is that it takes your bag from homemade to custom made. You know, it just, it's such an easy thing to add. A lot of times it's easier to add rivets than it is to do the stitching and keep it looking nice, but it makes it look so much more professional. I just, I love them. I love them, I love them. So look at these panels. They are all ready to go. 
I hope that you enjoy this. Let me know if you try this method, especially with cotton like or even cotton woven. Let me know how that goes. We will go ahead and build the handles after we're done with the bag. So you can put these to the side. Now grab your two lining cuts for your slip pocket. Like I said, you could double this up and then just have one cut and then fold it in half, whichever way is easier for you. I'm gonna take my two cuts and lay them right sides together. So this looks like a square, but it is a, not a square. It is a rectangle. This top edge is longer than the side edges. So we wanna leave one of the longer edges open and then we're gonna sew the other three edges. So let's go to the machine and sew along the two short edges and the other long edge at a quarter inch seam allowance. Make sure you backstitch really well at the opening. This opening here is actually gonna be the bottom of the pocket. So if you have a directional print, the edge that we're stitching right now on the longer edge, that is the top. All right, once you have these stitched together, go ahead and clip the corners. This is just gonna reduce bulk in those corners. And now I'll turn the whole pocket right side out. I forgot to mention my favorite turning tool in the beginning of the video. I'll have it linked below though, but if you need to grab your turning tool and just pop out those corners. I love this turning tool because it's metal. It doesn't bend and break and it's not super sharp. You don't have to worry about it piercing through your fabric. All right, and what we wanna do now is just give this a good press to hold down all the edges. I just kind of roll it out with my fingers a little bit, press it down, and then press it with my iron. And make sure you get all three edges nice and pressed. So I know I'm gonna get some questions about my iron. This is the Chi Chai, I don't know how to say it, Chai iron. Um, I just wanna mention, this is what happens when you press the back of deck of the light. I should not have directly put this on the back of the deck of the light. Um, I can clean it, but it, this is what happens, you see that gunk on there? So, always cover the back of your interfacing, especially deck of the light, before you press it. All right, so now we're gonna take this to the sewing machine and we're gonna top stitch along this top folded edge. So you see we have the side folded edges and the raw edge. We're gonna top stitch along the top folded edge at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. You can do a second row of top stitching just below it if you'd like. Just make sure you back stitch at the beginning and the end. Okay, so now grab your two lining panels and your pocket. Let's do a little prep work here. Make sure you have cut those little triangles on the bottom of your lining. I know we haven't done that on the exterior yet. We will. But the pattern piece has these little triangles to cut out. Make sure you do that on both your lining pieces. Make sure the midpoint is marked on both of your lining pieces on the bottom. And then we're gonna just mark the midpoint along the bottom of our pocket. So you can just fold that in half and just kind of pinch it. You can use scissors or a pen, anything to mark that midpoint. Now take one of your lining panels and lay it right side up. And you're gonna take your pocket panel and lay it right side up and just line up the midpoint of your lining with the midpoint on your pocket. This way the pocket is nice and centered. There we go, just line that up, flatten it out, grab some clips and just clip it to the bottom here. If you need to use some tape to also hold down the sides, you can do that. I'm not that picky when it comes to lining pockets. Here we go. You can also use pins here if you're using a quilt cotton material. Now let's take this to the sewing machine and we're gonna top stitch along the sides and the bottom at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Make sure you back stitch really well up here at the top because if this pocket is used a lot, those stitches are gonna get most of the, the force on them. You don't want them to break. And there we go, there's our lining pocket. You could definitely separate this if you wanted like a nice little skinny pen pocket here, you could do that. But I think just alone this looks great. So that's all you have for the lining. We don't have anything fancy here. You, what you could do, which I see a lot of people do, which is brilliant, is you could add a zipper pocket in the lining. And then what you do is you leave the bottom edges of that zipper pocket open and turn the whole bag through that. We've done that in some other patterns. Um, and then that way you don't have any edges that you have to top stitch in the lining. Like we're gonna close this one up. I'm gonna stick with the pattern on this one, but if you're interested in that, we can talk more about it. All right, let's prep our exteriors. I did forget to add my bag tag, so let's go ahead and do that. So here is my bag tag I'm using today, as well as my washer that goes with it. So I'm just gonna find the midpoint on this, and I can do that by grabbing my pattern piece, or I can just fold this in half, but I want to find the midpoint on the top and the bottom. So using that midpoint on the top edge here, I'm gonna measure down about two and a half inches and just mark a little dot. And that's where I'm going to place my bag tag. So two and a half inches down from the top. This is what it's gonna look like. I think that's a good spot. And then I'm gonna use my washer here. I'm gonna center my washer on that dot and just mark 
the slit placements here. And then I can grab my seam ripper and very gently rip just along those slits. It's actually better if you rip a little bit shorter than what you marked because you want this to be a nice tight fit. And then I'll take my bag tag and just push this in through those slits and flip it over and then add my washer to the back and separate those tabs. Look at it from the front, straighten it out. That looks perfect. So now what you can do, um, we'll go ahead and do this. So now just to protect the lining material from these prongs, we're going to fuse a scrap piece of Decovalite over the back of it. So I just cut a little piece. I'm just gonna place it over that. I'm gonna grab some fabric to cover it so I don't ruin my iron. And then I'm just going to press that Decoville light to cover those back prongs. If you don't wanna iron it, you could also just use some glue and glue that in place. All right, there we go. We've got the Decoville light covering those prongs. So now everything is nice and safe. That looks adorable. All right, so we've got the tag in place. Now let's flip this over and just cut those little triangles down here. So these little triangles are gonna be what give the bag that really beautiful rounded shape on the bottom without actually having to sew curves. It's brilliant. I love it. So we're gonna line up our template on the sides. Here we go. It doesn't have to be super perfect. And I'm just gonna use this pen here and I'm gonna mark where those triangles are. And flip this over, do the same thing on the other side. And then once you have those triangles marked, you're going to just cut along those triangles, just like that. I like to wait, if I'm using the cotton lycra or cotton woven, I like to wait until closer to the last step to do this because we mess with this bag so much, I don't wanna worry about this fraying or ripping or anything. So you could even do this step after you've already attached the base of the bag. You could wait until the very last minute to do this. You don't even have to cut them right now. But I'm gonna do this for both of my exteriors. All right, so these are both prepped now. So now take the exterior main panel that does not have the pocket and then grab your exterior bottom piece. Now we forgot to do this, but we need to also mark the midpoints on the exterior bottom piece. Since it's such a firm interfacing, it's gonna be easier if you use the pattern piece to help you with that. So I'm just going to use my pattern piece to help me mark the midpoints. There we go. So now take that back panel and lay it right side up. Take your bottom panel and lay it right side down and just match up the midpoints. So I'm lining up the midpoints first and then clipping and then just kind of straightening it out. There we go. I love how this bag comes together. It's so cool. It's so cool. So now before we go to the sewing machine, grab a ruler and measure in half of an inch from the edge of your bottom panel. So half of an inch in and make sure it's pretty high up. Grab a marking tool and just mark a line. And you want it to be a pretty tall line because we have a big seam allowance here. So half of an inch in from both edges of your bottom panel. There we go. And now we're gonna sew along this bottom edge here at a half of an inch seam allowance, but starting and stopping at our marked lines. And make sure you backstitch well. Don't go past these. Start, stop, half of an inch seam allowance. So now grab your lining panel that has the pocket and your lining bottom panel, and we're gonna repeat this. We're gonna just lay them right sides together along the bottom edge and just match up those midpoint marks and clip together. Once again, we're gonna measure in half of an inch from the edges. And now we're gonna sew along this bottom panel, again, at a half of an inch seam allowance, starting and stopping at our marks. Make sure you backstitch each time. Alrighty, your lining is ready to go. Now let's go prep the zipper. So since I'm using zipper tape and it doesn't have a stopper, I am going to add a zipper tab to the end of my zipper. So I have a cut of fabric here. This is two inches by two inches. And I'm just gonna fold it in half, wrong sides together, and then open it up and fold those raw edges in to meet that midpoint fold I just made. I don't have any interfacing on this. This is literally just a scrap piece of fabric. It's the same fabric you saw me use to cover some of the interfacing when I'm fusing things. It's such a small piece that you really don't notice it. So as long as it just kind of blends with the rest of your material, you'll be fine. So I went ahead and cut my zipper to be 14 inches long. That's longer than it needs to be, but it's gonna be helpful that way. So I'm just going to quickly add a zipper pull to this. All right, so you can see the zipper, when I pull it to the right, it opens. When I pull it to the left, it closes. So that means this is the end 
and this is the open end. This is the closed end, this is the open end. So I wanna add my zipper tab to the closed end. So I'm just going to kind of hot dog it around <laughs> that zipper tape down there and add some clips to hold it in place. And my tab is just covering that raw edge of the zipper. And now I'm going to take this to the machine and just top stitch right along this double folded edge closest to the zipper at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Once I have that tab sewn on, I can now just take my scissors and I just kind of guide them right along the edge of my zipper tape and just trim off the edges of that zipper tab so that it just looks like one continuous piece of material. Isn't that cute? I, lo I just love the zipper tab. You could do the other end like this as well, but I don't suggest it. I think curving it off is a good, good fit for this pattern. So now grab your front panel, and for me, that's the one with the zipper pocket over here. And if you have the D-rings like I do, just make sure those are folded down. We don't wanna mess with those right now. Grab a ruler and measure in three quarters of an inch from each edge. So I know this is rounded, but just do your best to go right to that corner, three quarters of an inch, and then mark with something you'll be able to see. That's why I'm using this silver pen here, because it's hard for me to see anything else. Do this on both sides, three quarters of an inch in from both edges. So now take your zipper tape and grab a ruler and we wanna measure in 12 inches from the edge of our zipper tab. We're not cutting anything though, okay? We're just measuring 12 inches in from the edge of our zipper tab. I'm gonna grab my air erasing marker and I'm just gonna draw a line right here on the open edge side of my zipper tape. I'm gonna do this on both sides. 12 inches from the outside edge of our zipper tab. And now I'm just gonna open up my zipper like that. This is what it should look like. And so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna pinch right along these marks. I'm just going to pinch the zipper tape so the zipper tape goes wrong sides together. And you see as I pinch it, how it kind of curves up and to the right. I wanna let it do that. I'm gonna pinch it and let it curve behind. So now I have a nice little 90 degree angle. I'm gonna add a clip here, just like that. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. I'm gonna pinch right at my mark and then let it curve to the right. All right, now we're gonna go to the sewing machine and we're just going to stitch right along the outside edge of our zipper tape, this front fold right here, about an eighth of an inch. We're just gonna tack this down. All we wanna do right now is just hold the zipper like this. So however you have to do it, even if you have to hand sew it, that's fine. You could use tape here, whatever works. But we're just going to tack down this edge so that our zipper stays just like that without the use of the clips. All right, so I know that these little, these little Hey, hands <laughs> are longer than they need to be, that's okay. So now take your exterior panel, your front main panel, lay it right side up. Take your zipper and lay it right side down. Starting at that mark that's three quarters of an inch, we're gonna lay our zipper so that the edge of the tab goes right up to it. There we go. So ideally we don't have anything zipper related three quarters of an inch in from either edge. So now we're just going to lay this and curve it around this top here. The zipper tape will curve easier if you open it all the way. And just slowly go around. If you wanna use tape here, you can definitely use some double-sided tape to hold this down. I find the curve isn't that aggressive. This curve is, is pretty smooth and wide, so I find that just using the clips is fine. All right, once you get to the edge of your zipper, it should be right at that three quarters of an inch mark. If it's not, you can kind of readjust a little bit. If it's way past it, you need to remeasure and just measure how much you need to take it down. You can just unpick where you tack down this edge and then just fold it down a little bit more. You, you have a lot of options here to fix it if it's not exactly right. So now I'm gonna take this to the sewing machine. I'm gonna base down this clipped edge at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So once you have this basted down, grab your lining panel that does not have the pocket. We're gonna lay that lining panel right side down, right sides together with the exterior, but it's going to the wrong side of the zipper. And you should be able to just match this up exactly. You don't really have to worry about midpoints or measuring or anything like that. I like to clip on the sides as well, just to make sure nothing gets too twisted around. And then just clip to the top edge here. All right, and before we sew this, we wanna measure in one half of an inch from the edge. So I'm just gonna move this clip down. Half of an inch in from the top edge, just like we did on the bottoms, and just mark a line that you can see. There we go. So do this for both sides, half of an inch in. 
And now we're going to sew along this top curved edge at a quarter inch seam allowance, but you're going to start and stop at those half of an inch marks. Don't go past them, but make sure you backstitch really well at both of them. All right, now let's flip this so they're wrong sides together and then just give it a good tug or you can press it with an iron if it makes it easier. I like to line up the bottoms and the edges and clip those together to try to get this as straight as possible around my zipper. Opening the zipper is gonna help. I find that I don't need to add any sort of clips or anything in the zipper tape. However, if you see that this is kind of bubbling up and rippling too much, you can flip this back around so you're looking at the wrong side and just add a few slits along the curve and that will allow the zipper to kind of fold over and spread out a little bit easier. But I'm just gonna give it a good finger press. Ooh, you know what I can use? I can use this right here. This is the By Annie tool. Just kind of press right along that edge, nice and gently. And now I am going to top stitch along this edge, but I'm only gonna top stitch where there's zipper tape, okay? So that half of an inch over here on the edge, I'm not stitching it all over there. I'm just gonna start right at the edge of the zipper tab, go to the end of the zipper, and I will back stitch at the beginning and the end of that. Isn't that looking cute? I love this. Okay, so you can see I left the tails. If you'd like, you can definitely flip this over. Pull those tails to the back. It does offer a more professional look if you do that. It's also a lot more sturdy because you don't have to worry about these threads eventually kind of unraveling. If you triple knot these threads, they're, they're gonna stay good for a long time. So I'm gonna go ahead and just tie a few knots on the back of the lining, then I'll trim them down. And then if you'd like, you can grab a lighter and just kind of burn down the tails of that thread. But if you burn it too much, it's gonna burn the whole knot right off, which kind of defeats the purpose. So be very gentle. I like to just kind of burn the tails a little bit and then I pat it with my finger. It doesn't burn, it's fine. All right, that's looking great. So now we just have to do the same thing for the other side. Before we move on, if you'd like to open this up and trim down this zipper a little bit, you can definitely do that. Just do it carefully so you don't cut anything else. And now let's grab our other exterior panel. This one has the bottom flap already attached. And once again, we're gonna measure in three quarters of an inch from each edge. And then we're gonna take our panel that has the zipper and we're gonna lay it right side down. And I always like to start on the side with a zipper tab and unzip this, it'll be easier that way. And I'm gonna take the outer edge of my zipper tab and match it up with that mark that's three quarters of an inch in and clip it together. And then I'm just gonna gently go around this top curve Clipping my zipper tape. Again, fold down those D-rings. You do not want to accidentally sew over those. It'll scare the bejesus out of you. Don't do it. All right, and then once we get to the folded edge, we should be at our other mark. There we go. So now I'm gonna to go to the sewing machine and baste down this zipper at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. All right, once you have that sewn on, Grab your remaining lining panel that has the bottom on it and lay that right side down on the back of the zipper tape we just did. So it's gonna be on the right side of the lining from the other zipper tape. You know what I mean. Just carefully make sure you're lining it up with the edge of the exterior panel that you're connecting it to. So I always go to the sides first, clip those together. Again, I'm keeping my zipper open so that way this other panel kind of stays out of the way and then we'll just clip right along the top edge. All right, once we have that clipped, let's grab our ruler. And again, we're gonna measure in a half of an inch. So one half of an inch from the edge, just measure in and make a mark. Do this on both sides. Now let's sew along this top clipped edge at a quarter inch seam allowance, starting and stopping between these marks that we made that are half of an inch from the edge. Make sure you backstitch at both of those marks. So just cut down the zipper tape a little bit. And like I said, if you wanna go through and just kinda of do little clips around this curved edge to help it spread out more, you definitely can do that. I haven't found it needed it, but if you do, you do that. So let's push this so that they're wrong sides together. Should be able to kinda of match everything up. 
And then you can take an iron to straighten this out, or once again, you can use this end of the stiletto to straighten it out. The goal here is to get a nice, smooth curve around our zipper. All right, so I'm gonna add a couple clips to the sides to hold it in place while I mess with the zipper. Kind of smooth it out. I love this thing, this is great. All right, so now we're gonna go and top stitch along this edge only where there's zipper tape. So starting at the edge of my zipper tab all the way to the edge of my zipper teeth at an eighth of an inch seam allowance and I back stitch at the beginning and the end and I leave the tails. So once you have this top stitched, if you want, you can go to the lining side and just pull those top threads to the back just like that. And then once again, you can knot it, cut it and burn it. All right, so now you have everything attached to the zipper. In my opinion, that's the hardest part. The rest is actually pretty easy, which is great. So now let's work on finishing up the exterior. So take the exterior panel over here that does not have the bottom attached, and it's kind of a mess, but we're just gonna pull the bottom contrasting panel right sides together with the other exterior panel, just like this. And so find your midpoint marks and match up those midpoints and clip together and then just clip along this entire edge. Remember the bottom panel is shorter than the exterior panel, so it shouldn't reach all the way. All right, so we'll just get this as flat as possible. And we're gonna mark in half of an inch from the side edge of the bottom panel. And make sure you mark it pretty high because we do have a big seam allowance here. So you wanna be able to see it with your needle. All right, now starting at our mark, we're going to sew at a half of an inch seam allowance and stop at the other mark. Remember, we're not going all the way to the edge. Just make sure you backstitch at the beginning and the end. You know what, I just realized I forgot to add the purse feet and I could still do it. Should I do it? It's gonna be a little tricky. You should add the purse feet at least the step before this one. You should do this step after adding the purse feet. Um, but I think I can still make it work. Let's try it, let's just try it. Okay, so I'm not the best at purse feet placement, but I measured in one and a half inch from each edge and top to do the four on the sides. And then I decided just to stick one in the middle. So I think that'll work. So I've got my five little purse feet here and I'm gonna grab my washers. And all I have to do is center my washer over each of these dots. Make sure you think about which way these feet are gonna go. So like the little prongs on the back and we spread them out. We don't want them to get too close to seams, but I think we're okay. So I'm gonna have them go this way. Since I've already sewn these side seams down, I know that I should be fine. I'm not sewing over there anymore. So I'm just gonna center it over those dots ugh, and mark the slits. Those are mistake marks. All right, now that I have those slits marked, I'm gonna very, very carefully use my seam ripper and just rip right along those marks, maybe even a little less. The smaller the slit, the better. We want these to fit very snug. Adding these purse feet also helps to make sure that that heavy stabilizer doesn't move. If it kind of gets mushed around when we turn it out, the heavy stabilizer will stay stuck to the bottom of the panel. All right, now I have to go through the front and slide my prongs in through the front side, the right side, just like that. That's cute. And then I'll add my washer to the back and I'll pull them open, just like that. So I'm just gonna repeat this for all five feet. And to find the center mark, what I did was I took my template here and I just fold it in half and that gave me the center mark for the very center of the bottom of the panel. And this is the stabilizer template, not the exterior template. All right, there we go. And if you want, you can get a piece of woven interfacing or fusible fleece and cover the back of this. Since I'm using waterproof canvas, I'm not too worried about these wearing it down. Um, but if you wanted to protect it even more, add another piece of stabilizer over that. And this is what it looks like from the front kind of. It'll be a surprise. I love it though. All right, so ha we have the exterior bottom done. Now let's go ahead and do that for the lining as well. So we're just gonna take the bottom lining and the other lining panel that's not attached yet and use those midpoint marks to line them up right sides together and then clip them together. And just clip along the entire edge. Try to flip this so you have a better view of it. And then from the edge of the bottom panel, measure in half of an inch and then just mark a line 
so you don't forget where to start and stop. All right, so now we're gonna go to the sewing machine and once again, we're gonna sew along this bottom edge at a half of an inch seam allowance. Start and stop where those marked lines are and make sure you backstitch. I forgot to mention to leave eight inches unsewn <laughs> along this bottom panel. So this is the connection between the bottom panel and the lining piece that does not have the pocket. And you wanna measure eight inches to leave open. We can still do this, we're just gonna have to do a little bit more work. So leaving eight inches open here doesn't leave you a whole lot of stitching. So what you're gonna wanna do is make sure you backstitch really well. I mean, this is only like three quarters of an inch on each side here. So just backstitch really, really well. So I'm gonna go back to the machine and I'm just gonna backstitch to that, between these two lines on both sides. And then I'll take a seam ripper and just rip along this bottom edge here to remove the stitching. All right, there we go, problem solved. But you see it's a very small amount of stitching down here leaving that opening, so you have to be careful. So now working with the exterior, we're gonna close up the sides. So take your two exterior panels and just line them up right sides together along these sides over here. Don't worry about this opening just yet, we'll deal with that in a little bit. Right now we're just working on the sides. So just get them as flat as possible all the way up to the top. And because we didn't stitch all the way on those top edges, you should be able to flatten out this top corner here. So now we're gonna sew along this side at a half of an inch seam allowance. Make sure you backstitch really well down here at the bottom. And you should be able to stop right when you get to the stitching up here. So going at a half of an inch seam allowance should bring you right to the stitches. So for me, it's like right in the nook where the top stitching is. So that way we should close up this corner completely. <laughs> All right, that's looking great. If you're using vinyl for your exterior panels, make sure you do another row of stitching just so you don't pull on those stitches and show them in the end. So now we're just gonna repeat that with the other side of the exterior. So once again, we're just going to do our best to flatten it out and then clip it together. All right, and once again, we're just going to stitch at a half of an inch seam allowance, backstitch really well at the bottom and the top. But remember, our goal here at the top is just to get to the stitching. We don't really need to go all the way off the edge. As you might have noticed, when I'm sewing this, I start at the bottom and I sew towards the top of the bag. I just find that's easiest. So I will flip the bag whichever way I need to so that I'm always starting at the bottom and going towards the top. Okay, so we're just gonna repeat this for the lining side as well. So let's just pull the lining right sides together. Again, matching up those bottom corners and then just flattening out the edge and clipping together, right sides together. And do this for both sides. We'll hit them both at the sewing machine. I like to pop out that bottom panel so you're not going to sew over it. It's nowhere near the seam, but just to make sure. All right, now let's sew down both of these edges at a half of an inch seam allowance, just like we did on the other side. Backstitch really well at the beginning and the end, and you only have to go until you reach the stitching. You don't have to go past it. Don't go over to the main exterior panel. Once you have those sides stitched down, we're just gonna trim the seam allowance in half. We're gonna trim it down to a quarter inch seam allowance. So you can do this for the lining and the exterior. All right, now my favorite part, honestly. Uh, we're going to stitch down this bottom here. So what you're gonna do is you're just gonna take this opening and just kind of smush it right sides together. It's a little curved, but you're not sewing curves curves. You know what I mean? It, it's a really, really fun way to have a curved bottom without all that extra work of a curve. And what I want you to notice is those little triangles we cut. See this right here? I don't know if you guys can see, but the cut makes it kind of go in a 90 degree angle. So now it's just this perfect, perfect curve. I love that. All right, so I'm gonna clip both sides. And all you have to do is just pull it and flatten it out. Okay, so now this sucker can put up a bit of a fight. Ideally, you wanna lay it down like this at the sewing machine and stitch it, but it's, it's not gonna work probably. So you're gonna have to put it upright like this and just push down your material. Yes, you're gonna crinkle it, don't worry about it. But what we wanna do is we wanna stitch along these curved clipped edges at a half of an inch seam allowance and you see we're gonna start a half of an inch in. We don't really need to mark anything right now, but you can see your stitches from where you stitched on the bottom edge or the straight edge over here. We're pretty much just starting there and then doing a half of an inch all the way around until we get to the other stitches. This will close up those corners really nicely. Make sure you backstitch at the beginning and the end.
So that bit is definitely one of the more challenging parts because the bag wants to fight you. When I use Decoville Heavy for these panels here, it was very, very challenging because Decoville Heavy does not want to bend on you. It's much easier with the Decoville Light. I'm sure it would be with the foam as well. If you're using really thick material for the base and the sides or anything like that, go ahead and do a second row of stitching on the all four edges of the bottom just to make sure the threads don't show. But once you're good, just trim down the seam allowance in half. There we go, and I'm gonna go along the long edges as well. All right, the exterior portion is done. If you haven't opened your zipper halfway, make sure you do that. I have mine a little over halfway. You could actually open it all the way if you want. You should still be able to reach in right now and open it, um, but yeah, make sure it's not all the way closed. And now let's do the corners of the lining the same way we did the exterior. So we're just gonna kind of pull them like that and it should just flatten it out. I don't worry so much about the seam over here or anything. I'm okay with linings being a little, a little messy. If you wanna make sure that this lining isn't too baggy, instead of sewing this at a half of an inch seam allowance, sew it at a 5 8 inch seam allowance and that will help. That's what I'm gonna sew it at. But I only increase that seam allowance with this boxed corner. I don't, I don't do it for the long edges or the sides or anything like that. I find that the, with the boxed bottoms like this, it's fine if you just do it on this part. So now we're gonna go sew along these two clipped edges anywhere between a half of an inch and five eighths inch seam allowance. Again, make sure you backstitch and you're just going from end to end. Here we go, bag construction is done. Let's go ahead and trim down the seam allowance on the short edges. And I've got some pleats in my lining, I, it doesn't bother me. You want to trim down the seam allowance on the long edges of the lining that's perfectly fine just don't trim down the seam where there's not stitching so for example this here is my long edge with the stitching which is great you can trim that down then over here i have that opening we don't want to trim down that opening i'm just going to leave the whole edge all righty my favorite part let's turn the bag right side out and just be careful if you have a lot of hardware, if you have bag feet, if you have a metal bag tag, just be careful here that you don't rip anything. Oh, this bag is looking so good. All right, so what we wanna do real quick is we wanna close up the lining. So make sure you poke out all the corners and everything. I know it's a little wrinkly, that's okay. We can adjust that in a minute, but get this opening in the lining nice and flat. And we're just gonna tug along the corners and then I just go along the edge and fold them in. So we're just folding those raw edges in towards the center of the bag and then clip along that double fold. All right, now we can just top stitch along this clipped folded edge at an eighth of an inch seam allowance and that will close up the hole in the bag. All right, it's all closed up. Let's just plop this little cutie in there. Look at you. Just push out those corners really well. And as you can see, I mean, you can see that this took a beating to turn out. Look how wrinkly that vinyl is, right? We're gonna, we're gonna let that sit. We're gonna steam it a bit. We're gonna see if we can heat it up to get those wrinkles out. But you cannot see the wrinkles. Trust me, this interfacing, this Decoville light is super wrinkly, but you cannot see it at all because we use cotton lycra. And cotton lycra, it just doesn't show wrinkles. It's magical and it's so soft. Oh, I love it. Oh my gosh, this bag looks so cute. Let's take a look. Isn't that adorable? Love this. Okay, let's make the straps now. So we have our little D-rings all ready to go. So now we're gonna make these straps just like normal. We're gonna take a ruler and I'm going to measure half in, which is one and a half inches. My straps are 18 inches. If you want longer straps, you definitely can make these longer. That's kind of the nice thing about these straps and adding these swivel hooks on the bottom of them is that if you wanna wear this bag as like an elbow bag, you can have shorter straps, but if you also wanna be able to wear it as a shoulder bag, you could have different longer straps that you use with it. All right, once we have those lines marked, we're just gonna fold our straps in wrong sides together up to meet those midpoint marks. If you wanna use tape here, use tape. If you're using quilt cotton, then you can definitely just press it with an iron. You don't have to use clips at all really. I like to use clips. I know it takes a little bit more time, but it doesn't bother me. And also what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fold these short raw edges in by about a quarter of an inch. 
and then fold the long edges up to meet that midpoint. I don't really like the look of the raw vinyl on the edges of the straps. I know I did that on my first bag, but it bugs me. So I'm just going to hide those raw edges by folding them in about a quarter of an inch. And depending on your vinyl, it probably doesn't add a lot of bulk. For this vinyl, this is very thin vinyl. I highly recommend it. Um, it doesn't add much bulk at all. So it's perfect. It's not gonna be difficult to work with. So I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side, just folding it up. And then once the whole thing is clipped, we're just gonna fold it all in half like a hot dog bun. And just clip together. All right, there's one strap. Go ahead and repeat the same with the other strap. All right, once you have these straps all clipped and ready to go, we're just gonna top stitch along all four edges of each one of these straps at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. My straps now this vinyl is light but it is pretty stiff so these straps are gonna have a lot of structure which I like now I am just going to take my swivel hook and line it up so that the swivel is on the right side of the strap and that's the side of my strap that has the thread color that I like and I'm just gonna fold this over about a half of an inch three quarters of an inch let's see yeah this is about three quarters of an inch I'm gonna fold it over about three quarters of an inch and clip it and now what you can do is you can sew this at the sewing machine or you can just rivet it and I am only going to rivet it today so first I'm just going to fold everything over and what I'm doing is making sure I'm folding it over at the same amount for each one because we don't want we don't want wonky straps right we want everything to be the same size so I'm just going to add my swivels fold it over three quarters of an inch make sure it's the same that looks good you want to make sure you have enough room here to sew it or rivet it and then for this last bit i'm just going to make sure it ends up the same size now i'm going to grab my rivet press that has the hole punch you don't need two different rivet presses you can move these dies out of here i just I just always have the hole punch on this one and it's easier for me to just have one that's exclusively for hole punching. I'm grab my rivets and I'm going to punch from the back side because that's where I can see the fold over and make sure it's centered. So I'm just making sure I'm not punching through any stitching and I'm getting nice and close to the hardware without hitting the hardware. It can be kind of a lot of layers of vinyl. And then again, the nice thing is I can just slide a rivet in there and snap it shut and I can leave it there until I'm ready to press it. Isn't that cute? So much easier too than top stitching. In my opinion, it's just easier. So I'm gonna do this for all four edges. Once I have all of the rivets in there, now I'm just going to quickly press each of them. And these are so, so strong. It is more likely that your vinyl will rip over time than it is that these rivets will come out. I just can't say enough good things about it. All right, there are our straps. Now let's just put them on the bag. See how they look. Oh yeah, that looks good. Yeah, that looks great. Look how cute that is. I love this little Lola so much. And what I really like too is that with the swivel hooks, if you decided you wanted a crossbody strap, just go from this one to the opposite side on the back. And now you have a crossbody strap. So you can use the short handles and the crossbody strap at the same time love 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 this pattern all right let's take a little look at our lola oh my gosh i love this this is such a fun fabric isn't it and with that white vinyl this bag turned out so cute i love these straps too i love i love the petiteness of these straps i really do i am a cross body fan but these little straps are so, so cute. And I love too that we added the purse feet on the bottom. Now this is just such a professional, professional bag. Again, that cotton lycra is just so soft. 
it kind of throws you because it's so soft, but it's also firm because we have that Decoville light here. So I, I really hope you give it a try. And let me know if you do those little strap connectors, those little hinge straps, let me know how that goes. If you run into any problems, let me know about that. I found them pretty simple, but I wanna know how you like it. So I have another bag strap here and I just wanna see what it looks like with it. The colors don't really go. The hardware is gold hardware on this one instead of the gun metal that's on the bag. But I just, I, you know what? I actually am okay mixing up my hardware and my zipper pull and my zipper tape. I, I, I mix it all up a lot. So I kinda wanna see what this looks like. Oh yeah. Look how cute that is. I think it goes. I think it goes. I think it'd be better with a strap that had some purple in it. You know, it's definitely with some purple and some black in it, but I think it still looks adorable. Oh, I love this bag so much. So thank you so much for sewing with me today. I hope that you love making this as much as I do. This is one of those patterns where I will be buying the acrylic templates. You can get those from Tops and Bobbins. Uh, I'm gonna order the acrylic templates for this one because I do see myself making quite a few more of these. They come together very quick. They are a beautiful shape and structure. I think that if you had a small business and you sold bags, this would be a great, great bag for your business because this would be a fantastic bag to gift over the holiday season. I could see a lot of people wanting to gift a bag like this this holiday season. So if you make it, let me know. I hope you're having a great day. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your week. Get out there and make something. Bye guys. Bye.